Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2. In this episode I'm going to try and complete my mission to land landers on Mars, Deimos, and Phobos and hopefully begin that by properly aero braking around Mars. So uh, without further ado let's get this craft into Mars orbit. Uh, we are currently quite far out, but uh, we just need to get into Mars's sphere of influence and then get a little bit closer to the red planet. And then we should be all right. We might need a mid-course correction looking at this. 9,500 kilometers is possible just to get into the sphere of influence, but it might be better to do some sort of correction partway there. Let's see. Here we go. Okay, that brings us below 1,000 kilometers. I'll take that. It only costs 3.2 meters per second in 63 days. Making sure that we're all good on all of our resources. Let's continue. Every so often, auto saving likes to delay me, and that's what it's doing right now. It's just continually auto saving for some reason. Going to retract this AIS antenna, it's not very useful out here anyway. Okay, and RCS should be able to handle this. Oh, but I'm using the RCS up here and that's not what I, well, I could I could shift the fuel back up anyway. Okay. Sure seems like we've got a crash course now. Okay, yeah, taking a look at our approach, it looks like we are now on a crash course. We'll correct that once we get within the Mars sphere of influence. Alright, so, uh, on we go. Okay, here we are. Now, we want to make sure that we're going in the same direction as the moons. And that means flipping around a bit. Let's uh, set one of them as a target first. Ah, uh, it's not going to let me click my orbit. Well, let's keep it to there for now. It's going to be a pain, but... I've got other work to do right now. Let's try this first. It's not going to cost 1,400. We're going to be doing it from further out, so it cost less. But I just can't make a maneuver node. I guess I could make a maneuver node using mech jab but in theory the direction I want to flip around should still be the same anyway so I don't have to bother with that okay 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 alright so yeah relatively painless in terms of Delta V it wasn't anywhere near that much but we need to make some further adjustments otherwise we're not gonna be anywhere near the same plane as the moons and landing is gonna be tough I don't need a maneuver node in two years. Let's see if MechJab can help with making a maneuver node now. Okay, that looks like it might work. At least it'll be a little bit better than what we've got right now. Not by much, but still, a little bit counts. Wow, that's dropping my periapsis a lot quicker than I thought it would. Oh well, okay. Hmm. Not great. But let's just get into orbit first and then figure things out. Okay, so noticing that our orbital speed is a little bit high, in fact, it's it's currently higher than orbital velocity around Earth. Um, I think maybe I should lower my periapsis a bit. Uh, you've got it retrograde. Let's... I have no idea what to lower it to. I suppose a bit under 36 will be fine. I don't know. Tough to say. Let's get a little bit closer. Hmm. 
Yeah, we're coming in awful fast. I mean, 39 kilometers was for the Phobos lander, and that was on a proper home and transfer, and that was going much slower than this, I believe. And then even the stuff I did with the previous attempt at this, without the heat shield and all, seemed to be going slower than this. Though it, that didn't give us a point of comparison because we didn't have the drag fixed. I hope we have the drag fixed. Uh, we'll find out soon. But... But then there's the heat issue and the possibility of crashing into Mars issue. Hmm. Get a little bit closer. We're gonna lose connection on the opposite side while we're trying to aero break. So that's part of the problem. I, I won't be able to change anything once we are in aero breaking mode. In fact, uh, it'll probably take us a while to get out. Well, it depends on how tight an orbit we end up in, if we end up in an orbit. I'm gonna err on the side of being a little, little bit closer. Uh, I have a bad feeling about this. Okay, okay, that's enough. That's what, that's... Yeah, anyway. Okay. Retracting solar panels. We don't really need the solar panels anyway, because we have all of the probes RTGs, but only one antenna running. So, it's all good. Alright, well, here goes nothing again. I really don't want to do this again. I hope this works just this this time finally you know what if this fails if this fails we're gonna do something different <laughs> we're I'm not gonna launch this again okay uh, we are going to do something different if this fails Let's keep far open while we're trying to hit the atmosphere we are properly retrograde okay Okay, now we're hitting the atmosphere. Atmospheric interface. Okay, drag is what I expected it to be. Okay. Good deal. Wow. 9,293... 9,440 orbital velocity. That's what... A little bit less than three times what orbital velocity around Mars is supposed to be. We've lost connection. So, this is it. Um... Got the heat shield protecting us, hopefully. Uh, can I click on it? Okay, I can't click on anything. Oh, nope, there we go. Heat shield, temperature steadily rising. Um, the thrust... Okay, I've got a right-click issue. Okay, whatever. I'm gonna focus on the heat shields. Heat shield. Okay, flame effects. We are now above freezing on the heat shield. We're still 55 kilometers up. Periapsis dropping. That's normal, of course. Don't I really wanted to check on the temperature on the thrusters because they're sort of poking out. Don't know what's going to happen with that. G-force is rising. Now about 5 Gs. Six Gs. Uh, what? Oh, the the side fairings. Oh yeah, they they did have a problem, didn't they? They they were they were heating up on those those re-entries that we were doing in the previous attempt with this sort of thing. Oh dear. Okay, can they survive as we get through periapsis here? The heat shield is 
getting lower in temperature. Yes, uh, they are getting lower in temperature as well. They're no longer overheating. And we're still not in orbit. But we've still got the whole ways up to go. Still no connection. Okay, heat's no longer a problem apparently, but I can't click away because, oh there we go. Alright, so heat's not the problem, getting into orbit's now the problem. Turns out we still have more blade of shielding than we needed. Still going awful fast. Remember, um, escape velocity is square root of 2 times order velocity. I just used the approximation about 1.5 times. This is actually 1.4, but I just used approximation 1.5 times. I think orbital velocity around Mars is about 3,200 meters per second. So I'm estimating that escape velocity was about 4,800. And so we are way, way above that now. But we are probably within range where retro burning with the bottom stage to 729 meters per second will bring us into orbit. Maybe just barely. But we don't have connection to do it, so we're going to have a suboptimal burn further out, wherever we get connection. What does that look like? Uh, well, it's a long ways away. Um, you can see we're sort of on this side of the planet. We have to actually pass through the planet here with this. This is the connection line. It has to go all the way across here. What's this looking like? Uh, no, it's, it's not there yet. But we can probably get into orbit. We can probably get into orbit, though we'll have limited resources in order to correct inclination and stuff like that. And uh, we'll have to be careful about all this. In a pinch, we could sort of abandon one of the landers, say, uh, decide not to go for one of the moons, and just pump that fuel into the bomb stage to bring everything into the right location. Okay, we're connected. I'm just going to straight up retro burn. I'm going to point retrograde and burn this way. And try, and try to get into orbit like that. We're already pretty high up. We're at uh, 3,900 kilometers. We're on the nighttime side of Mars. I wonder if I can uh, sort of solve some inclination issues here. Uh, which way that would be like? Uh, this might be a little bit ambitious, actually. No, that's the wrong way. Wrong way. Other way. But while we're here, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure the 660 meters per second we've got left can get us into orbit after, what, nine and a half minutes? So we might as well try for a good orbit instead of a bad orbit. Okay, I'm, I'm not uh, correcting inclination anymore. We're pretty close to getting into orbit, so you can see the orbital period going up quite quickly now, and apoapsis is quite far out. But I'm also running out of fuel in this stage. Okay, that's orbit. But I would like an orbital period that's less than one year. I'll accept one month, I think.
So I'm, I'm running out of fuel here and I'm going to need to lift my periapsis up too. Okay, orbital period of one month. So at apoapsis, I'm going to lift the periapsis up. Probably not going to cost too much. Oh, there it is. Uh, probably not to 209. But if I recall, the problem with the Phobos lander was that I tried to, air, uh, on the air braking the second time around, I tried to hit the same altitude, 39 kilometers or something like that. And that actually brought me down to the surface. I think that's what happened, right? So I want to air brake pretty high this time. Let's say 60. Actually, 60 was already pretty hot, wasn't it? Uh, well, definitely not 50. Well, anyway, we can uh, fix it on the burn itself rather than trying to fiddle around with maneuver nodes. Gate node. We, uh, I was thinking about doing twice what we hit on the first pass, but let's just go for 64 kilometers. I'm just pulling numbers out of my hat, honestly. Um, so, 64. Okay, hopefully that's safe. All right, here we go again. Still need the heat shield, obviously, because we need that drag. If we're on prograde on the apoapsis sign, we should be retrograde on the periapsis sign, so the orientation is fine. Oh, why does it look like we're going Okay, I was just looking at it wrong. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, yes. Boy, our, our orbit is so weird that I, I thought we were going the wrong way around the planet. Oop, oh, oop, oh, oop. Oh. Weird. Weird texture issues. Okay, here we go. Okay, we are going up again. We've passed periapsis. We we dropped our orbit a healthy amount, still not a huge Might be a good idea to leave it like this maybe. No, the then the Mars lander which won't have enough drag won't be able to slow down enough, will it? Nope, I think we'll have to make one more pass, and perhaps a little bit higher than this. No, I, I think it'll be alright. Oh, we gotta go through this again. If uh, it turns out that I pull it in too much, of course we end up crashing into Mars, and that's, that's nobody's idea of a fun time. Okay, well, there's decision time, and I'm at apoapsis, and I, I think we're just going to... We're just gonna go for one more pass at this altitude. Now, of course, even if you kept, keep the same altitude, it means that you are spending more time in the atmosphere, because as you tighten your orbit, uh, you actually hit the atmosphere earlier each time. So... So we are actually going to experience more, more friction from the atmosphere, more drag, and therefore more reduction to our orbital velocity. Okay, we've passed periapsis, going back up. Certainly not a problem in terms of how, how low we're getting. Actually, we're, so we're still pretty high on the apoapsis side. Oh, that's that's not a bad view. Okay, I've plotted a minor inclination adjustment, keeping the periapsis about the same. So we're gonna go through one more time. Maybe that's not a very good idea. 
We're gonna have to lift our periapsis eventually, after all. But I can let the landers do that in individually. Maybe it is time to separate things. Let's see what we can do about that. Ah. Well, the old trick of separating one of these might be a little bit more complicated. Let's see. Um, we've got connection at least. Let's try and roll away from that piece. Aha. Okay. I'll go away. Now, I want to make sure... Hello. Ah, okay. Right-click issue. Kerbin activates. Okay. Alright. And... Well, that should be all set for that one. Okay, this is going to get complicated. Wow. No connection? Hey, hey! Oh, uh, maybe I'm on the wrong piece. I hope. No connection. No connection. No. You should have connection. You had connection just a second ago. Kerbin. Oh, okay. I guess maybe maybe you just lost connection. Looking at it there, yeah. All right. So they just lost connection. That's gonna be fun. Actually, let's go. This one, which has no connection, needs to just get into a proper orbit. This one is going to end up trying to make it to uh, Deimos. Uh-oh, I'm having UI issues. This may not have long left here. All right, we've got connection. Well, it's got two days. Let's go to the other portion and separate them properly. Okay, this might be dangerous to do. Let me quit out and then come back in. Okay, so here we go. It's a little bit dark in here. Um, that's connected to Kerbin, that's connected to Kerbin, Earth, really, but you got the idea. Uh, so I'm going to take the risk here, decouple. Okay, it just gives me the decoupler, no, that's not what I want. Uh, what part are you? Okay, well, looks like I got both parts already. This inner stage fairing adapter. Hey, the jettisoning actually works now, here, but it didn't work before. Uh, I'm confused about that still. Okay, now that's away, and we're in control of this. Okay. Let me uh, use RCS to back off a bit. Right, okay, so that's a way. Now, for uh, clarity's sake, let's rename some of this stuff. Oh, this has got that attached to it. <laughs> that's a little bit weird. Okay, well, uh, sometimes that's something you gotta deal with. Okay, I'm sorry if you can't see all this, but uh, we've got issues. I'm going to rename this. This is probably the Phobos Lander. Lander. Okay.
this. If we can ever get to the lander part of it, it will be the Mars lander. Okay. And the one I want to keep track of right now is it that one? I think I'll have to go back to no, I don't think that's the right one. No, maybe. But it's not letting me uh, select it at all. So I'm going to switch back to the tracking station. Okay, so here's the thing. I tried to go to the tracking station and the game froze. I restarted the game, uh, tried to go to the tracking station, game froze. So I had to restore, restore the situation and I got rid of a bunch of debris in the hope that that would make the save more stable. And, well, we, we'll have to see what the situation is. I don't remember exactly where we have it here. Let's see where I had had it last. All right, uh, we've got it in the 30-day orbit. So the initial, the initial situation with uh, a 64-kilometer approach, 65 it looks like, and, so, and all together instead of separated. So I'm going to take care of all of the all of the aero braking first and then I am going to uh, catch up with you once I've got it separated again. All right. So this is going to take a while. Okay, let me try this again in daylight. Let's jettison one of these fairings. Jettison one of these fairings. Uh, do a bit of rotation. A bit more rotation, perhaps. Going to extend the solar panels on the top one. Make sure this is trained to Kerbin. Okay. This two aim for Kerbin. Okay. Now quick save just in case things go horribly wrong. Yeah, probably didn't want to do that. Okay, this probe is way. This is. This is going to be called. Demos probe. Demos lander. This isn't a thing. This is. And this is going to be called Phobos Lander. And it is going to decouple from this. Ah, never want that to happen. And it's going to float out there. Let's... Oh, I, I don't have control over it anymore. There we go. It needs some solar panel re out so that it can stay alive.
And might as well have this up and activate it as well. Okay. Looks a little bit weird, but that's fine. Whoa, fairing. Lots of debris here. Yep. Okay, this is another probe. And this is going to stay inside here for now because it's going to head back into the Mars atmosphere because indeed it is the, the Mars lander. And what we need to do is get some sense of staging here so that it can dump the excess heat shielding and all of that when necessary. Okay. Um, hmm. Well, seven days worth should be fine. We're not going to take that long to land this. Okay. Well, I think it's as good as I can get it. This is going to head back down, so we don't need to change anything about it. Lots of debris. Now you just can see why I got rid of some of the debris closer to Kerbin in order to make sure the save re remains stable. Okay, now this, I'm going to plot some stuff. This is the Phobos lander probe. Technically the Phobos lander. So we need to actually target Phobos with this. Why is that still green? Always worries me that. And this can... This is going to have a little bit of a maneuver here. In order to correct its inclination with Phobos. It will automatically be boosting its orbit doing that. Phobos is not going to capture anything unless we hit it pretty much right on. It's a tiny little moon. That's the first thing. Uh, let's activate the engines on this. Okay. It's not letting me do it. Why? Have I selected the wrong thing? Uh oh, it froze. Uh oh. Come on. Okay. If I press spacebar, will you let me do it now? No. Okay. Strange that I can't stage it properly, but I'll take what I can get. Okay, where's my third thruster? that one okay so you can see we've got tons and tons of Delta V here 2973 is plenty so this little burn isn't gonna trouble us much now let me go to the tracking station to make sure I can actually switch between vessels like that did I name two for Phobos? Or just one? Let me go to the tracking station. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the problem. I can't get to this screen, the tracking station, if I try and separate the three landers. Basically what happens is, when I separate the three landers and try and get to this screen, when I'm trying to switch vessels, this freezes, no matter what I do. I, I was supposed to release this video on December 4th, and I've spent a whole day trying to figure out how to solve this problem. Let me take you through the steps I've tried. Right now, the craft is in, well, I'll show you what situation it's in right now. It's all connected together. It's not three separate landers, but it's, uh, as you can see, uh, fully aerobraked. So uh, I was preparing to separate them. And the, the different uh, things I've tried to do is, first of all, clean up debris. So I reduced debris from 205 to 113, as you can see there. I went into the persistent file and deleted the, the, the debris caused by separating the three landers. So I had done that in one iteration, not in this iteration because they're still all together. 
but in one attempt I tried to do that and so that the only craft involved uh, the only objects involved in that area were the three landers uh, that did not work I thought about whether maybe it was a remote tech limitation and so I because you know there's so many connections if you look at our our situation here it's not showing it right now because one of the things I tried to do was to turn off the the connectivity but if you draw all the lines you can see it's quite a web so one thing I tried to do was uh, delete Stayputnik 5's. Uh, In fact, I'm, I'm just going to do that now. Uh, they should have uh, deorbited a long time ago anyway. You can see suborbital trajectory. So I'm just going to terminate the two Stayputniks even though they've they've uh, done a great job so far. But yeah, so thereby reducing the connections and hopefully making the system more stable, but that didn't work. Um, so uh, yeah. I think that covers the different attempts I did to solve this problem. Let's jump to the craft. Okay, so you see the situation here. This is as far as I can get. Basically, once I try and separate them or do anything else, uh, tracking station no longer responds. And if tracking station can no longer respond, I can't get to any of the vessels. I could try and install Hay uh, Stack plugin and uh, go there that way I think I think it works in the main um, KSC screen but uh, I haven't tried that uh, that's a possibility but for now uh, they, they've they're all connected to to uh, to earth Kerbin but uh, and right now if I go back I can go back to the tracking station just fine but uh, if I try and separate them, I can't. System freezes. What actually happens is uh, there, there's a memory overflow of some kind. Uh, so I see my RAM uh, going up and up, my RAM usage going up and up, uh, and eventually it'll actually cause the blue screen of death. It did that once. I just let the program sit there to see what would happen, and uh, yeah, the whole system crashed. So yeah, uh, this is quite disappointing. Uh, I'm going to release this video on December 5th, which means that December 4th, the Orion uh, launched EFT-1 got scrubbed, uh, but uh, it did launch this morning, and so congratulations to NASA for a nice launch. I have no idea whether Orion survived a re-entry, uh, because I'm recording the video before it's it's trying to splash down, but, but good job on getting that thing uh, launched, and I hope everything goes well with it. And uh, unfortunately, uh, my own missions have not uh, met with uh, similar success. So I don't know what to do about this. Um, we could uh, just delete this and uh, try and do further missions, something less complicated. Obviously, this is very complicated. Uh, just a straightforward mission to Mars. Uh, but what if something uh, causes a problem with that? Uh, I don't know what is causing this problem, so I don't know what the limitations are of this save right now. And it really shouldn't be a limitation of the save. Again, I tried deleting stuff out of the save, and that didn't seem to help the problem. Um, it could be that it is because uh, some mod was updated. I mean, I've been trying to fix the procedural fairings problem, and maybe that's an, an issue, but I can't really tell. Still haven't fixed the procedural fairings problem, by the way, so if you have any tips about that, please uh, toss them by me. I tried various things, uh, not in this save, in a test save, uh, and none of it has worked. I read the thread, I tried the stock bug fixes, um, so yeah. Anyway, so there's that side issue, but this is the more pressing issue. I'm going to leave this like this. And so if you have any suggestions about what might be causing my little problem with uh, the tracking station crashing, uh, there are no, uh, it's not an asteroid problem. I, uh, some of you might have uh, thought of that. Uh, no, there, there aren't a large number of asteroids being created. So, so uh, the asteroids are well under control. So yeah, that covers that possibility. I, I'm, I, over the past day, I, I've come up with quite a few possibilities to check out. Uh, I don't think I've mentioned all of them. But anyway, uh, if you have any ideas for what might be going on to freeze the tracking station in the screen, I'm going to leave this like this so that if the solution comes up, we can continue with this mission. But for now, I, I can't see anything. I'll, I'll try and think it over. And uh, obviously, I'm soliciting 
possibilities from all of you. So with that, uh, thank you for watching. I'm looking forward to your comments and suggestions this time. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Otherwise, we did successfully air break around Mars this time. So we did bring this craft into orbit. And we are prepared for the rest of the mission. And we know what went wrong. And so we need heat shields. That's, that's what I'm going to say. We need heat shields from now on. So yeah, uh, we did have partial success on that front, but uh, we need to get the full success. So I hope for that in the future. So thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments, suggestions, please do contribute them, and I'll see you next time.